Meine Damen und Herren, das hier ist David Bowie, der hat ein neues Album raus, das heißt Heathen. Welcome on my show. Thank you very much. Here we are, E-Work. Yes, in Germany. Yeah, yeah. At last. Yeah. It's a very hot gig so far. We haven't even been out there. Very yes. sweaty, huh? Yesterday would have been better because that was really cold yesterday. Yeah, it would have been a good one for indoors. Never mind. then the fans outside get Never wet. Never mind, it'll be good. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I heard that you're a massive Daniel Johnston fan. How yes. did you get into his music? Um, well, you know, his cassettes have been circulating in America for a very long time. What he used to do is make his little cassettes at home and then take them to the record store locally and swap them for comics. And then they liked his cassette so much, the guy who owned the, the record shop said, can we, do, can we start selling them to people? And he said, fantastic. You know. It's very sweet. It's a very sweet little story. And uh, he's kind of, he's blessed with a wonderful ear and he writes beautiful melodies. And uh, he's, he was very influential in the 80s uh, to a lot of people like myself who like outsider music. Yes. You know, and uh, he got really well known. Then I think Nirvana picked up on him as well. Exactly. And they really Kurt Cobain was running around with t-shirts. That's right, yeah. T-shirts with yeah, his yeah. name on. Yeah. Uh, but I, I wanted to talk about sort of artists and their, their sort of very strange naivety, like also Sid Barrett or uh, Brian Wilson. Very much in the same kind of lineage. Exactly, yeah. but it, somehow it seems to get dangerous. If you have an artistic purity, yeah. then suddenly your mind goes... Boop. No, I don't think so. I just don't think that they're tyr that they're, they're, they've not been assimilated by the mainstream. Their ideas haven't been affected by the mainstream. Um, I think uh, most writers, whether they want to or not, find they're writing things more conventionally than they would because they want to have some kind of uh, entry into that mainstream, you know? Yeah. And I think these guys are writing so strictly for themselves some of them totally unaware that there is an audience for them. That the, the way it comes out is in such a pure form. It really is unadulterated, you know, and it's terrifically inspiring. Yeah. And that's, I kind of like listening to that kind of music more than mainstream because, because it has this pureness, this, this quality of real truth heart. about it. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But um, on your new record, I found a song, A Better Future, which I thought is very naive in a positive way, because yeah. it's a very demanding song. And, but very simplistic. Exactly. I mean, it couldn't be more obvious what I'm saying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It's nearly sort of childish, isn't it? Yes, I it is. Demand, da, da, yeah. da. And it's written, of course, with my child in mind. I mean, it's written because I've got a two-year-old child a beautiful, wonderful child, and I want her to have a terrific world to grow up in, you know, but it's not going to be like that, but you still want that anyway. Yeah. So the song was a very direct demand. Exactly, and <laughs> a we demand want everybody to, have a to better listen world. to yeah, you kind now. Of like that. I wish, huh? <laughs> But what uh, I realized on that song is because it's a very demanding song, but yeah. you sing it in a very calm and quiet way. Yeah. How did that occur to you to have that? It just sounded too pedantic if I got uh, aggressive with it, and it sounded much more effective. I don't know, I think opposites often make a lovely effect, you know? And if you're say, saying something that's very demanding, but to say it in a very kind of uh, 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 balanced voice, you know, it, it, it kind of it has an interesting effect on the listener, I think. Yeah. It's like saying, I'm going to kill you in the morning. <laughs> kind of. Happy birthday, tomorrow you're going to die. That's it, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, whoa. Yeah, oh, God. Sounds like you really mean it. Exactly. But if you just shout it, you might just be angry for that minute. And maf mafia bosses, they're always very calm, aren't That's they? very true, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's this um, incredible ballad on your new record called Slip Away. Oh, you like that, do Yes, you? very much. We're doing that tonight. Good. Yeah. Is that about people who live in the past? It's actually about, it's, uh, well, it's about the past more than the people that lived in it, I think. There was a television character on American television in the late 70s that John Lennon turned me on to. And in turn, uh, Iggy Pop and I became huge fans of this character. And his name was Uncle Floyd. And he had a children's show, ostensibly a children's show. But actually, it worked on an adult level. It was very funny for adults, and, and he knew it. Got the Children jokes. and got okay. it. Yeah, it yeah. was one of those shows, you know, two-level show. Um, we used to kind of rush to a television set about five in the afternoon, never miss it, and it would have us on the floor. And everybody, it was kind of a very in show in New York. It was on Channel 68, which was like a tiny little <laughs> station out of New Jersey, you know. Yeah. And he did it out of the, his living room with all these Italian friends of his. You know, hey, yo, ooh. it was all kind of like. Bobby De Niro doing comic stuff for children. I mean, it was really again. funny. Yeah. <laughs>
And I guess the song is really about the feeling that that time was somehow more peaceful and fulfilling and committed than it is right now, which of course is not true, but you get that sense that nothing can be as bad as what it's like now, you know, that, that, that where are you? And so when I'm saying, like, where are you, Uncle Floyd, I'm really saying, where is that time gone? You know, where is that piece of space that felt so secure? Yeah. The security of laughter and feeling good and all that. Of course you're not only a musician. Um, I'm not only a musician. No, you can do I'm even more than that. I'm also a very good that. gardener. <laughs> and uh, can you fish? <laughs> Green fingers. Yeah, no, you're I not can't, a gardener. I can't, you're not. I you're can't a cook either. I burn water. I'm a terrible cook. Really? Yes, very well. even eggs? What? Um, I could probably do an egg, yeah. Okay. But as you're not you're, only... We've got three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> as you're not only a musician, do you think yes. a music has too many limits, that you would like to achieve something in music which you can only do in a painting? Well, that's interesting, yeah. I do find that I go backwards and forwards, not so much these days, as I really, really am happy with uh, what's happening with me as a writer. I like the way I'm writing, and I, I like the way the, the records are sounding, and so I'm, I'm finding a lot of uh, fulfilment in what I'm doing at the moment. I, uh, it's really cool. I'm really happy the way things are going as a writer. Um, but I did find there was one time when I would just alternate all the time, go from literally from song to painting and backwards and forwards. But what I found is that one would help the other. And it would, uh, if I got to a block on the song, I would often go kind of, I, I, don't, I don't know how to describe it, but I'd paint it out. I'd paint out the song, maybe not in a, a figurative, literal way, but I'd paint out the weight of the song or the, or the kind of the aesthetic of the song and often it would clue me, it would give me a breakthrough and I'd go back to the song again. I know what it's missing and I'd go back and, you know, they're kind of reciprocal. They kind of help to each other. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I do enjoy both very much. Um, I'd like to talk about the Pixies. You hey. covered them? Hey, hey. what? They're Pixies. <laughs> yes. It's Italian band, you know. <laughs> oh, no, God, no, don't. <laughs> no, really? Then. No, no, no. No. Um, and you covered Cactus yeah. on your new record. Yeah. But the Pixies, they always run around, or used to run around, and yeah. say that they were influenced by you. What is They're, it like for you? Oh, that I mean, I was so flattered when I heard that. I mean, you know, Charles came and did a gig with me in 97. He came to New York. I had a 50, 50th birthday show, and he came up and sang a couple of songs with me. It was lovely. We had worked together before in the early 90s uh, when I had the band Tim Machine. They, we were sort of doing shows together in Europe. Because at that time, the Pixies, they were just splitting up, which is so, I thought was really sad. They should never split up. They were yeah. such an important band. For me and my friends at the time, I think we thought that uh, the Pixies and the, I do come, there's about 50 people just want to come. Um, the the Pix <laughs> I wouldn't. The, the Pixies and Sonic Youth, really, I think, in the 80s were the bands that we thought were any good, you know? They yeah. were the only two, actually, that were doing much interesting. Um, uh, and uh, it just seemed to me a sh real shame that America itself didn't support the Pixies, you know? And it's their own country, and nobody bought them. Nobody First time I saw them in America was a high school hop type thing. Oh, this is at the peak of their popularity in Europe. And, and, and there was like 50 people there. I couldn't believe that there was really no recognition for them in America. Yeah. And they broke up because of that. There was just no support. And uh, I just thought that unfortunate. It's always a shame that bands like that, and then afterwards, when they've broken uh, up, afterwards, lots of people Then they say, oh, what a like great band they were. Dying, blah, blah, blah. It? Then it kind of, you yeah, no. <laughs> it kind of, it is a bit like that. Yeah, we, we, we yeah, yeah. <laughs> Was that too sad now no, for no, the ending? No, no, no. puts me in the right mood for a show. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I am a bit negative sometimes. No, my songs are all sad anyway. No, I've got some happy ones tonight. Yes, they are. There are lots of sad I'm doing ones. some happy ones. Yes. Yeah. We're through already. In, be in between the great slabs of miserable <laughs> Making things. everybody cry in the sunshine. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. It's been my great pleasure. Were we quick enough? You were, Charlotte. You were great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're true to your word. Thank you very much, everyone.